Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're trying to find the friction or the coefficient of friction required in order to keep the block from moving. So what we have here is we have a 20 Newton block. So we, we're, we're not given the mass, we're given the weight of the block. And we know that the force of 60 Newtons is pulling on the block, but it's pulling at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. So what is that coefficient of friction required, and it would be static friction, to keep the block from moving. But what we need to do here is first take this force and find the x and y components. So we can find the force applied in the x direction, f sub x, which is equal to f times the cosine of 30 degrees. That's equal to 16 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees. And then we need a calculator for that. So this is equal to 13.856 Newtons. I keep a few extra decimal places so I don't have a round off error. And then of course in the y direction, since the angle is 30 degrees, that's the opposite side to the angle. That would be uh, 0.5 times 16. So in the y direction, we have F sub y, which is equal to F times the sine of theta. And so that would be 16 Newtons times the sine of 30 degrees, which is equal to 0.5 or 8 newtons. We also have to think about the force of the, of, of the weight acting on the block. So we have a force pulling down. So that would be mg, and in this case, that's equal to 20 newtons. And then there's a normal force pushing back. Now here we have to be careful about the normal force. The normal force is not going to be equal to mg in this case because there's also a force here that's partially pulling up on the block with a force of 8 newtons. So therefore the, the normal force will be 20 newtons minus the 8 newtons from this force. So 20 newtons minus 8, oops, that should be 8 newtons, which is therefore 12 newtons. So the normal force is only 12 newtons in this case. Now we also have a friction force acting on this. Since the block is being pulled in that direction, the friction force will be an opposing force. So the friction force, in this case, is equal to the normal force times mu. And in this case, the normal force will be 12 newtons times mu. And of course, we're trying to find the value for mu. And yes, let's call it the static coefficient of friction. So if the friction force is going to prevent the block from sliding to the right, from the block to begin to move, the friction force, the maximum friction force you can have, because essentially this is the maximum friction force, must be at least equal to the force in the x direction, which we have right here. So what we're looking for is, and let me grab my black pen now, so what we want is we want the force friction to be greater than or equal to the force in the x direction that's applied. In our friction force, we now know that's equal to 12 newtons times the coefficient of static friction, and that must be greater than or equal to F sub x, which is 13.856 newtons in order to keep the block from sliding, which means that the coefficient of friction must be 13.856 newtons divided by the 12 newtons and right away you can see here that would be a value greater than 1, which is an unlikely scenario. So divide this by 12, we get 1.155. That means that the coefficient of friction required would be 1.115. And typically the coefficient of friction is only between 0 and 1, so that would be an unlikely scenario. You can safely say that in almost any circumstance, the force applied to the block will indeed be capable of making the block slide and the coefficient of friction cannot be large enough to keep that from happening. And that's how it's done.